Well, hello folks. Welcome to Captain Dave's Sport Fishing YouTube channel, Jacksonville, Florida, where I am going to show you today what I have eventually, through all the years of doing king mackerel trolling, just basically trolling offshore, I never really had the patience for the whole live bait thing. I've done it. I mean, it's no problem. I, I have no issues with it. I'm not running up and down the beach looking for pogies. But become, it becomes the doldrums of summer in Jacksonville, Florida. And I enjoy going out and doing a little trolling. Many times, the bait is going to take hours. I do a six-hour day. And I could easily burn up two hours just looking for bait. So I'm not going to do that. And I never have. I've been in the charter business for 25 years and have done just fine with what I'm going to show you today. I'm not saying you need to go either way. Live bait, dead bait, whatever. For me, it's all about time. When a customer says to you, after you've been looking for bait for an hour and a half and a customer on your boat says, so when are we going to go fishing? That's a subliminal message that they thought they were going fishing, not running up and down the beach or watching you try to catch bait. It's been a long-standing thing that you control dead cigar minnows. What I'm going to show you today is a rig that I have come up with and it works. So I'm not out tournament fishing. I'm out to go out and catch a few kingfish. Over the years, I've caught it all on dead cigar minnows. And if you don't know what a cigar minnow is, that is a cigar minnow. I have other videos about how I brine them on the way out to my spot which they're prob they might be brined already. That's a good looking cigar minnow right there. No splits in the skin. It's kind of shiny. I do a mixture of kosher salt and baking soda. And I will put them in a bucket with some ice to thaw out and brine all day as we're fishing and on the way to the first spot. So, that's a good-looking cigar minnow. No breaks in the skin, which they can easily get breaks in the skin and have breaks in the skin and tears and everything right out of the box. So, what you're doing is you're, you're going through the, your box of cigar minnows and you're hand-selecting the best candidates. So, we'll get back to that in a second. But this is the rig that has really worked out for me. One thing you're going to need is quarter ounce rubber core sinkers. All right. You can use the rubber core sinkers or a, this is a quarter ounce egg sinker that I cut with just a little tiny saw and split myself right now these are the rubber cores and they have had the rubber taken out all right the rubber cores and let's see here if I've got one to show you well I don't but what you're doing is the same thing as what I do with these little quarter ounce eggs you're going to eventually, let me get the light over here. You're going to eventually be putting this on a Eagle Claw or Mustad 2 watt short shank bait hook. Same thing. This, you widen this open with a, uh, just a screwdriver and you Put the hook down in here, and you'd clamp it on with a pair of pliers. 
That's it. This one just happens to be one of these split eggs. So quarter ounce works out perfectly to fit on this hook, either the eggs or the rubber cores with the little rubber taken out. So that's one thing that you're gonna need to compile. And I'll tell you, after you, if you make 10 of these, you're probably good for pretty much, you know, uh, uh, several trips. That's the, one of the first parts of the equation. The second part of the equation is the braid angler's tool. It says braid right there. So these are one of these mandatory tools that you're gonna need. This is the rig. It's a 5 aught mustad pointing down, a 5 aught mustad pointing up, and your little num 2 aught little 2 aught with the quarter ounce egg on it. That is your lead hook. So it's going to end up looking just like that. So the first thing we have to do is in this tool, and I'm not going to spend a ton of time talking about this tool because I already have a video about it, is these back here are eye openers. These slots here are eye closers. That's why this is referred to as the angler's tool. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do a succession of opening up this eye. And I need to adjust this. All right. And you go in. And if you can see that, you squeeze it and it opens up the eye just enough. And then we're going to take this hook and we're going to go over it. Then you got the eye closing little sections right there. Let me get my hand out of the way. And that will reclose. So now it can never get past the barb. All right. So the next thing we're going to do then is we're going to repeat the process on this hook. This may not be something new to a lot of you, but it could be big time new to a lot of you. Okay, we're gonna hang that, put that through, and we're gonna go in here and we're gonna close this eye also. And these are all different sizes for different size eyes, and then so are these. Okay, so that is what your rig ends up looking like, right? there all right i mean the nice thing about this is you unlike a double treble king mackerel rig that i mean they even sell in like wally's world this is is reusable and when you hook a fish i mean you pretty much got them when you're using hooks this size so the next thing you would end up doing is taking, and I use like 45 pounds single strand wire, okay? And you're gonna do your haywire twist on here, okay? If you don't know how to do a haywire twist, there is all kinds of videos about it, and I'll kind of go over it really quick here. Is you take about two inches of wire, stick it out here, then back here, and you're going to cross it. Cross it, push down, make a nice little loop, and you're going to pinch that loop, and you're crossing these wires, one over here, one over here. So they're like going away at a 45 degree angle from center. All right, if you can kind of understand that. You're going to pinch this, and you're going to hold you're going to do double pinch, and you're going to twist it at least once. That'll hold it. 45, 45, each going away from each other, if you can see that. 
You go in the center and you go twist again, twist again, and you're going to repeat this process, doing it like that, not one around the other, twisting together. That is the entire story right here. Twist it again. If it gets a little out of whack, use your fingers. All right, I'm doing this while I'm looking around a camera lens. Now, that's what it should end up looking like. And see those twists? Next, you're going to take it. You're going to bend the end here out 90 degrees. You're still holding down here this little loop you made. And now you're going to do a barrel wrap one around the other. And that's what's pinning it together. All right. That's what it should look like. This is called the haywire. That's called a barrel wrap. Those very top ones where you go one around the other. And the haywire is the two twisting together. Then you go in, you hold the back of it, you make yourself a little pump handle here, and you're going to rock this back and forth. And that'll come off nice and cleanly. And what I mean by cleanly is you run this through your fingers like that and you're not getting cut. Now, many times, you can add a skirt to this, a little duster. I do that all the time. I'll show you one. I got all kinds, all flavors. I actually like the tinsel ones. These are rubber. These are kind of like rubber little duster skirts. I prefer, I got all these on like a serious closeout. All right, I prefer kind of the little silvery colors. Just to add a little flare and a little look at me. Then you're going to slide that down. And there's your complete rig. The reason you have the weight here, the reason you're putting that weight there, is because a lot of times when you're trolling dead bait, it needs some chin weight to help it guide through the water. What it's going to do is you're going to put your cigar minnow in the water, or you're going to be putting it on a downrigger, adjusting your speed, because your minnow, as I will show you in a minute, your minnow attached to this, and I'll show you how we're going to do that, should be doing this. I call that swimming. It should be swimming. And sometimes you'll get it so good, it looks like he's going to pop off the hook and go join the school. That's when that bait is really working good and then this breaks up the water a, a little bit in front of your bait and gives a little flash and of course this weighs like some sixteenth of an ounce this little metal doobie right here so you would do the same thing on the other end of the leader and you would add a small swivel and then tie that to your trolling rig, your rod and reel. All I'm doing is how to rig the cigar minnow so it really swims and it looks great. All right, we're back. And what we got here is our dead nice shiny cigar minnow that was sitting in some brine. You don't have to brine them. I'm anal, I do stuff like that. So as you can see now, our rig puts the hook in a, a hook right about there. So you select even your cigar minnows by size and by no cuts in them. Look at this one here. So this one isn't for, this one's for crap. It's got a big cut right in the belly. So as you can see, the rig is going to be just like that. There's going to be a single hook back here for them little short strikers. And what you do is you 
take this hook and you want to pin them right under the chin is absolutely centered and you can see the hook point is coming through right in the center so there you go you're pinning the mouth closed you're grabbing a little bit of the the hard part of the head and now you see how your hooks are going to lay so next thing you do is you curl well no it's actually the first thing you should have done in the first place is you're going to break his bones up a little bit always back it up with your finger and you're going to squeeze gently with your thumb and you can do this and throw them in the brine as you're trolling along gives you something to do this isn't slow trolling you are ripping along 1500 rpm and you want this tail to be able to wag you're going to take this hook and you're going to bend them and i stick it right there now this cigar minnow is it's terrible it's half you know it's been thawed and everything too much so these will just be end up being using for bait but that that hook on a fresh bait won't blow them up just like it just did right there when you pull you're pulling from the nose and it's keeping this hook up in there and now this hook is a free swinger it can free swing back there and your bait will be wagging then you drop your skirt over it and that right there is it's so effective for me so that's the way it's going to troll there's no tr you know sometimes when you're using treble hooks they they're wigging around back here and they snag your bait and they tear it up if you got a 200 horsepower outboard or whatever you're running 1200 rpm most of the time you put this bait over the side and you pulse it and you'll see It'll want to lay over and then it'll pick up and it'll start wagging and now match that speed with your boat. Be it a downrigger, a flat line, whatever you're doing. And this will start swimming. And then of course, you know, you gotta check them because they'll get blown out or whatever. But then what do you got? You got a little bucket and you got your brine and you're brining these up in the, the kosher salt and uh, baking soda little mixture with some ice you're keeping them cold they're brining you pull them out you break them up like I just showed you and you got tons of bait make sure you're always going to check them every once in a while if you're not getting hit but usually we get hit I leave one out and it starts to sink as we slow down and we're on the fish or whatever then when the Chinese fire drill is over, you know, and I pulled up all the downriggers and got everything out of the way, I'll maybe take that one that I left out, I'll shorten it up a little bit so I can keep a really good eye on it. And we're fighting the fish. Five aught, must add, 3407. That's what these are, standard of the industry offshore hook. These are on the, my Amazon Tools of the Trade page. You'll see these on there, and you'll see the must-add hooks on there. And I commonly use Malin, which is a dark brown. This isn't Malin. This is something else. I usually use Malin 45-pound single-strand wire. You make up about 10, 12 of these rigs, you're good to go. Box of cigar minnows, throw a, a duster skirt on there, go fish. What's wrong with always having a box of cigar minnows handy? Like I said, I'm not tournament king mackerel fishing. This is all I basically do, and we have a ball doing it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.